In the first part of this three-part series, we talked about the need for hot swap control, how it works, and we discussed one of the more common hot swap circuits, which is high side and channel MOSFET hot swap control. In this next section, I want to talk about three other circuits, which are high side P-channel, low side N-channel, and low side P-channel. Okay, so we talked about high side N-channel hot swap, which is very common. Another thing that you'll see is high side P-channel hot swap. And what we do is we replace the N-channel FET that we talked about earlier with a P-channel FET. And this has some advantages and some disadvantages compared to N-channel. Um, one of the nicest things about P-channel is that unlike an N-channel, it doesn't require a charge pump, which I sort of failed to mention earlier, but when you're driving an N-channel FET and you want to generate that gate voltage that goes above the input supply rail, you have to have a charge pump. You have to have some kind of a switch capacitor, typically a charge pump, that generates a supply that goes 5 or 10 volts or 1.8 volts above the, the rail you're controlling so that you can enhance the gate of the FET when everything is fully turned on. In the P-channel case, we don't have to do that because we still have a, we still have a gate to source voltage threshold to turn on the FET, but in this case, the gate goes low compared to the source. It has to pull, be pulled below the source of the FET. And so what this means is that in the simplest circuit, we can just have a divider like this, and this would turn on our FET and give us a controlled gate voltage. Okay. Now this is this is okay, this would turn on the FET, but again, it doesn't give us a nice controlled turn on because once we reach the gate to source threshold voltage, in other words, once the gate drops a threshold voltage below the source, this thing turns on pretty strongly. And as it continues to go lower, it turns on even stronger. So again, you've got kind of an un uncontrolled inrush to the uh, load device. So to solve this, what we do typically is not use a divider, but we again have uh, capacitance here uh, that is going to be, in this case, sort of tied over to the drain of the FET. And then we'll drive this with a current source that is going to pull the gate low relative to the source. And the way this works is that now, when this pulls the gate down, below the threshold voltage, current starts to flow through the FET and we charge up the output and the drain potential begins to rise from zero volts up to the positive rail. And as it does so, what we have is a current, an AC current that flows through this capacitor and that draws away charge from the gate of the FET. So as the output swings up, pulls current away from the gate of the FET and it keeps the FET turned off or, or kind of in a, in a uh, linear region so that you have controlled inrush. And then basically what you're doing is the charge pump has to uh, basically pull enough current back through there to get the FET turned on, get that gate pulled below the source, and turn on the output. And so this gives you, again, an I equals C DVDT kind of characteristic to turn on the output. And the nice thing about this is, like I say, we don't have to have a charge pump. We can basically just have a current source that is pulling low on the gate of the FET, and we get a nice controlled turn on. Now the disadvantage of this, well the prime disadvantages, is that P-channel FETs tend to be more expensive or larger for the same size, or sorry, for the same performance. So compared to an N-channel FET, if you want the same RDS on, or if you want the same size, you're going to make a trade-off. The P-channel FET will have higher RDS on in the same size, or it'll be a larger size for the same RDS on as an N-channel FET, or price is higher. One, of those, one or more of those factors comes into play. So P-channel FETs typically just don't have as good performance. But I say the big, the big advantage is that no charge pump is required, which simplifies the hot swap IC. So that's P-channel high side hot swap. Next thing we'll talk about is N-channel low side. So let me redraw this circuit and I'll come right back. Okay, so the next most common hot swap circuit that you'll see is an N-channel low side hot swap circuit. And this is very common for telecom systems that use minus 48 volt power, anything like that, where you have a high side reel that's referred to ground and a low side that ends up at minus 12 or minus 48 volts, something like that. And there'll be an N-channel switch element used to do the hot swap function itself. And this is analogous to a high side P-channel. So if you think about it, it's almost like a mirror image of the, the P-channel high side hot swap circuit. So we've moved the the FET to the low side, drain is connected to the output, source is connected to the minus rail of the supply, and when we're turning this on, the load, this point here, 
starts out at ground, or zero volts, and then as we turn it on, it falls down to the VEE potential. Sorry for my bad handwriting. So we want to basically draw it down slowly from ground to the minus rail. Now the trick here is, again, we have a gate to source threshold voltage. If we simply start to put charge on the gate of the FET, this FET turns on strongly at some point, and adding more charge just makes it turn on more strongly, so you get uncontrolled inrush. How do we counter that? Well, we place a cap from the drain to the gate, and again, as this, as this point here falls, right, as, it, as it's going down, we basically get uh, charge drawn off this way, if you think of it. It's, it's pulled through this cap from the gate of the FET. And so again, we have a constant current charging the gate of the FET, but that constant current really has to charge this cap here in a linear way in order to, to get the gate of the FET enhanced. So this again provides us with a nice controlled DVD-T at, uh, at the load point here. So this is a kind of a neat circuit because, again, we don't have to have a charge pump. We're simply supplying a current to the gate of the FET. The gate of the FET is going to end up somewhere between VE and ground. Uh, basically, it's going to be one threshold voltage above VE when we're done. So that's nice and easy. There's no charge pump required. And we get the high performance advantage of the N-channel FET compared to P-channel. So we get the better RDS on or smaller size, better cost in that N-channel FET. So this is very common for telecom and other uh, applications where the high side is referred to ground. Now, the disadvantage of this, obviously, is that low side switch means that now you have, if, if this was a positive supply application and ground was down here and this was the positive side, well, now your load is energized at the positive rail all the time and, and you're hot swapping and dropping ground down away from that. That presents all kinds of problems. And uh, any losses that you have, any I squared, R, or, you know, basically I times RDS on, the voltage drop here, now creates an offset between ground here and ground here. So it's not great for a positive supply system, but it works really good for a negative supply system, like in telecom, where for corrosion and electrical, uh, you know, anode removal kind of effects that you have in those systems, they want to refer the positive to ground, and the negative is, the, is kind of the flying rail or the rail that, that is allowed to move around. So that's the, the N-channel low side hot swap. Next thing we're going to talk about is something that, as far as I know, is just kind of a theoretical discussion, but we're going to replace this N-channel FET with a P-channel FET and show how that would work. Not that anybody ever does it, which I'll talk about in a second, but let me erase this and show you that, that circuit. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, we, we talked about the three common hot swap circuits that you'll see, which is high side N-channel, high side P-channel, and then finally uh, low side N-channel. Now, what I've drawn here is something that as far as I know, it's just kind of a theoretical discussion, but it's interesting to think about because it's analogous to a high side N-channel, and that's a low side P-channel FET. So what we have is a P-channel FET connected with drain to the minus rail, source to the load, and then the gate. Okay, so how do we drive the, the P-channel low side FET? Basically what we want to do is have a capacitor and a current source that is actually pulling this down below the source, right? It has to actually enhance the FET by pulling the gate voltage below the source. And then the inrush current comes through the FET like this. And as the, uh, <clears throat> as the source voltage falls, obviously if it falls too far, it starts, to, you know, it starts to catch up with the gate and it pinches off the FET. So this is very much analogous to the high side end channel. Uh, we're basically creating a potential below VE to turn on the, the, uh, the FET. Or actually, really, we're turning on a, a potential below the source, which starts out at ground. And as that falls down, that, uh, that gate drive voltage is, is leading the, the voltage here. And you're getting inrush through the FET this way as the supply charges up the output cap. And as this point, as the, as the load point here is falling from ground to VEE, basically what we're, what's happening is uh, if the source catches up to the gate potential, which again is also kind of going below like this, it'll pinch off and stop in rush to that output cap. So if you think about it, it's kind of a mirror image of the high side end channel. Now the reason that nobody does this is A, P channel FETs are less performance or higher cost or bigger package for the same, you know, if you, if you squeeze the balloon and you have RDS on cost package size, 
uh, the p-channel FET is going to be worse in some regard compared to a similar n-channel FET. If you fix one parameter, the other ones get worse. So we don't really want to use p-channel FETs if we can avoid it. And the disadvantage here is that now we have to generate a negative charge pump that's going to end up with a rail below VEE to, to enhance our FET when everything's fully turned on. So you have two pains in the neck, right? You have the poor performance of a p-channel FET, plus you have to have a charge pump to generate a negative supply to enhance your FET. So nobody does this. This is, this is something you could do, but nobody builds this circuit. You'll never see this. But it's interesting to think about because it is, like I say, uh, an analog of the high side end channel.